Secondly, use your artists, take the original color, and then use that as a tree lightener instead. Now, as you see, that uh, my bushes are somewhat splendid, but it merges way too well with the back with the foreground and that's okay because I'm going to show you a technique of grass because grass is almost as hard to draw as hair I think I am personally better at drawing hair than I am at drawing bodies like you give me you give me a pencil and I can like shade hair easily um, if it's black and white hair, yeah. If it's curly hair, yeah. Straight hair, definitely. Uh, moving hair in the wind, yeah. Definitely. Obviously. 10 out of 10. What, uh, when it comes to painting, I haven't tried to really paint hair, except for in the hammocky picture, which I have shown you in the beginning, the one with the fire armor, and, um, Jacqueline, which is the one in the portrait. I haven't really done that much hair either. I'm probably going to show you it after I'm done painting, but this is going to be the general thing for the trees, and I am not going to add any more. I'm just going to make the background a little bit darker, so then, so then uh, you can see. Why do I need the blue? Uh, if you have seen my paint palette entirely, and then you notice that there was a blue, a dark blue, and a light blue, and I haven't really used it for correction because I'm pretty much satisfied. That's because that's going to be the darker part of the background. You see, in forests in general, when you paint a forest, um, it, it has usually green, obviously. But I like adding blue in actual and make and that it makes sense in the nature world, uh, especially in magic. Um, like, at night, you would just see blue and gray and black and pretty much darker colors. And so, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take most of my paint that I have used, and I'm going to add a bit of blue in it. And then it's not going to be turquoise, but it's more going to be like a, a, a dark evergreen, if you know what I mean. Because evergreen is a little bit slightly blue, and I kind of love it. It's, um, well, kind of love it. I mean, like, I definitely love it. Um, let me test. No, it's not blue enough. Boy, mixing paints takes patience, remember? When it comes to any other color except for black, it usually takes more until you get, like, to the right color. Usually. But other times it takes a lot less like with black so as I am making this evergreen I want I want to know what would you do what would you um what would you actually draw see this is like the kind of thing I'm doing and then I'll just add a bit of blue as well to um to mix well with it anyway I want to know what kind of painting would you do would you prefer to do landscape, like that ocean drawing I, sh I showed, or would you rather do uh, portraits with people, and you have to, uh, or would you just do fan art where you paint characters, like kind of like this one, this is fan art, definitely. Um, would you, would you uh, prefer painting, or would you still prefer sketch, or clay, or music, or uh, whatever kind of art you do, because you know there's different types of artists, definitely. Um, uh, and even if you try painting, what kind of paint would you prefer? There are different types of paint. There's watercolor, there's oil, there's uh, uh, fed, um, coffee. You can actually use coffee per for paint for however you do it. I do not know, because I, cause I haven't watched it. I think you just add different paint brushes, uh, like certain cups of coffee, and then just, and then just paint with it. For those who create masterpieces with it, I applaud to you, because I don't think I will be able to stand the idea of putting coffee on paper, let alone a, a food item on paper, let alone coffee. 
whenever there's a food item on my paper, it's usually a mistake that my friend makes during lunch, and I'm like, uh, why did you ruin my art? When it was just basically didn't even land near my sketch, but in my sketchbook. Um, anyway, yeah, this is the, one of the final products, and the thing about grass is that, like, when you have to, uh, blend, I'm gonna do it real quick, because I'm going to probably go now, you take, since it's sunrise, uh, in this picture, you can take a bit of orange, and a bit of green, I know, really odd combination, but, you can make grass blades with it, and it looks either like dying grass, or you can take yellow, like a bright yellow, and just separate the lines of it. Add little dots and grass blades with yellow to show that there's sunlight between the grass and the and the bush. It's um it's a really odd thing I found out when I was making digital art. I wanted to show sunlight, but there was no sun in the picture. So what I did the best thing, next best thing, I just add sunlight on the on the top of the bushes where um right now it's shaded, so I'm not going to really add sunlight, but I'm going to add a little bit of yellow that reflects off the leaves. Some leaves at least. And then there you go. Um, now in the foreground, I'm just going to add more berries. You don't have to watch that. But basically what I do is just wait until I find the dry spot where I want to put them. Or if the spot I want to put them is still wet, put them in ne somewhere near that spot. And just generally take, take the base paint and then lighten it. Base paints I use, orange, like a vibrant orange, and just orange circles. And then, after it dries, I just add another layer of orange circles. And then I would just add a little bit of yellow on the top to uh, show that the sunlight is showing, you know? And then that's it, basically. This is all for my, this is all for my art little, my uh, uh, paint. I'm glad that you actually sat through all of this 40 minutes. I'm going to let this dry for now. And I shall see you next time. Uh, peace. <laughs> Alright.